Uh, terrorism back in the headlines this week. Last Sunday, more than a dozen people were killed in coordinated attacks on churches in Indonesia. The attacks were carried out by a family of suicide bombers. That included two children ages 9 and 12. Then on Monday, another coordinated suicide bombing at police headquarters in Indonesia. Authorities say a couple and their eight-year-old daughter were responsible. That little girl survived the explosion. Joining us now to talk more about these issues of terrorism is Director of the Center for Terrorism Law, Jeffrey Atticott. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. for being here. My pleasure. So nothing new that women or children have sacrificed themselves and essentially been agents of death, but now we're seeing families in this case. Yeah, and you know, the tragic part about it, of course, these kids don't know what they're doing. They're following whatever their parents tell them to do. At that age, you don't have the, uh, the self-awareness, self-consciousness to, uh, to fight back with, with what, you know, what your parents tell you to do. And that's really very tragic when you see that children are being recruited and used. We've seen this in ISIS. We've seen it in other groups where they actually target the very, very young um, and basically brainwash them and use them as puppets for, for murder. So is this setting the tone for the future for possibly more families doing this? It's very unusual when you have a family. Usually it's someone that's in the family and then the rest of the family members will say, well, we never knew anything about it. So it's just, uh, you know, it's another manifestation of the ruthlessness of uh, that type of an ideology that can link family members together in a common goal to kill people and to murder people is extremely tragic. And, and with something like this, uh, I know that with, with ISIS, um, they do recruit in the U.S., we know that. Yeah. Uh, what does this mean for America? Well, in the big picture, we've seen a dramatic drop in the number of attacks, terror attacks, and arrests and prosecutions in this country. If you look at the statistics from 2015 and compare them to 2017, it's been cut in half. And of course, people will say, well, why is that? Well, because the largest branch on the poisonous tree of radical um, uh, terrorism has been ISIS, and this president has obliterated them geographically from the face of the earth and therefore their narrative that God's on our side is no longer available because how can you say that God's on your side if you've been obliterated geographically from Syria and Iraq and they're not motivating people all around the world as they were doing in 2015, 2016, 2014. You saw thousands of people flocking from Europe to go to fight with ISIS and even people from this country, uh, 100, almost 200 people did that. So if they're no longer inspired then that's why we've seen a dramatic cut in the number of, uh, of domestic terror attacks in this country. And we've, we were talking about this before, but obviously what happened last Sunday and Monday, but we've seen more attacks, more terrorist attacks. Yeah, there are other attacks still popping up around the world. We've seen them, you know, this, this past week in, in uh, England. And of course you have uh, the ones in Syria that are continuing on, a, on, a, on, a, on you know, unabated, but the levels are lower. Uh, they're far lower again than if you would look at the same stacks and the same things that were happening, as you recall, in France and England just a year and a half, two years ago. You saw, you know, very large scale attacks in Germany. Uh, those have diminished. I mean, that's that's the good news. But it's like changing the oil in your car. You don't change it once and oh well, we're done with this. Uh, this, you know, this terrorist mentality and these types of individuals are going to be with us, unfortunately, for uh, for the foreseeable future. All right, Professor Adicott, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure.